Hi there, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to be building this ground ripper attachment for our Ingersoll 4118. Here's a little drawing of what we're going to be building today. The total root ripper bar is going to be 46 inches in length. I'm going to be placing uh, pieces of angle iron every 10 inches on the back to hold our rear cutting tines, which are these right here. And then I'm going to be mounting this to the back of my A-frame adapter that's on the three-point hitch. I'm going to be mounting it in two spots. I'm going to be using these pieces of rectangle to be uh, connecting it on. So the steel I'm going to be using today is a piece of 3 by 4 by 3 16 inch rectangle, a piece of 2 by 4 by quarter inch rectangle, and a 3 by 3 inch piece of 3 16 inch angle iron. I'm going to be using the angle iron to hold the cutting teeth every 10 inches. I'm going to be using the 3 by 4 uh, as the mounting points, and I'm going to be using the 2 by 4 as kind of the primary uh, piece to this build. Let's get to it. Here I am preparing to cut the material for this project. I am using this Ironton brand cold cut chop saw from northerntool.com. This was the first time I used this saw and as you can see it cuts incredibly well through this 3 inch piece of 3 16 inch thick angle iron. I confirmed with the square later on that the cuts were nice and straight and perpendicular to the side edges just how you want it to be. Uh, in comparison, like I used to use an abrasive wheel chop saw and the cuts would frequently warp to one side and they were never square. Uh, this saw cut really, really well. I was really happy with the results. Uh, here I am just squaring up the fence, making sure the fence was indeed square. Uh, the cool thing about this chop saw is, is after you cut the steel, nothing is hot. Uh, and there are no burrs and edges that you have to clean up like if you were to use an abrasive wheel. Uh, so that made my fabrication time in this part of the project uh, go by much quicker. And it was at about this part of the cutting process where I decided to shorten the length of my cutting bar attachment. I originally was planning for this to be 46 inches long, but when I was cutting in all the material, I decided that was too long and I shortened it so now it is only 32 inches long. Here I am using another new tool in my shop. I'm using this standing floor drill press to drill the holes for all the mounts that will hold the Scarfire teeth. And I'm drilling the holes to be 5 8 inch uh, large for our 5 8 inch pins. And here I am tacking all the mounts in place. I'm tacking them in one at a time and putting a pin through the holes just to keep everything nice and aligned. Now this spray you see me spraying on everything before I hit the weld is called Clean Weld. That's K-L-E-E-N, Weld. It's an anti-spatter spray, and since I'm welding with flux core wire, uh, what it does is that all that spatter and sparks that you see coming from the weld, it makes it so none of that sticks to the steel that I don't want it to stick on. So before I do a weld, I spray that stuff on, and then when the spatter hits it, it just flakes right off. It does not stick at all. It makes my welds look a lot cleaner, and it makes cleaning up after I weld much, much easier. And now here I am moving into the finished welding. Everything's tacked into place, and now I just move in a groove and I just uh, weld everything to its final spot.
Now here I am beginning to cut the mounting bracket for the attachment. This is a 3 inch by 4 inch by 3 16 inch uh, rectangular tubing. What I'm doing is I'm cutting one of the sides down so it's just a three sided bracket. I'm then going to later be drilling holes and I'm going to be using two of these to attach to the A-frame adapter on my tractor's three point hitch. And here I am using the drill press again to drill the holes for those brackets. I'm drilling a half inch hole and you're going to see me in a moment to get the hole in the exact same spot on the top and the bottom of the bracket is when I'm finished drilling this hole I'm actually just going to raise the entire table up like I'm doing now and then I'm going to just continue that drill bit through the bottom piece of the steel and drilling the hole in the same exact spot. That's one of the reasons why I switched from a bench top drill press to a standing floor one so I can have the height and the clearance to do procedures just like this. Now here I am behind the tractor preparing to fit the, bra the mounting brackets to the rest of the attachment. All I did was put the attachment on a block of wood, lower the three point hitch, uh, hook the brackets to the A-frame, and then snugged everything together with clamps and now I'm just tacking it in so I know that everything will fit perfectly. Now it's time for me to fully weld the mounting brackets into their position. So here is the ground ripper attachment after all the welding is finished. I haven't painted it yet at this point, but I did take it for a little spin to test it out, and this is how it did. The attachment worked perfectly as planned. Now here I am moving on to priming it. I always use the Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer even if I'm painting new metal. It seems to be the most durable and it's always worked well for me so I just stick with it. Here I am just spraying some Rust-Oleum Black on here just to uh, keep it from rusting when it's uh, out in the weather working hard all day. So there you have it. This attachment came out exactly how I envisioned it. It works great. I'm really happy with everything. Uh, for more information about iSaveTractors.com, please visit our website. We sell high quality aftermarket engine parts for your old Kohler K series, Magnum series, Magnum Twin series, KT series, Tecumseh, as well as the old Briggs and Stratton engines. My name is Norman. See you next time.